Hello. In this video, we're going to go over the installation of Greylog in Ubuntu. This video has been edited for time, so some of the sequences that you're going to see are going to be shortened. The first sequence here we're going to do is an update on the system, as well as a full upgrade to get everything current with the newest Ubuntu patches that are out there. Now after we've gotten the current patches updated, we're also going to go ahead and install some other packages. One's OpenJDK for the Java side, and some PWGen so we can generate some keys. Here you'll see those install and get fully implemented. And once these patches are installed, we're going to go ahead with the actual three main components of Greylog. And for your reference, the three main components are MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and the Greylog itself. Now this first part here, we're importing the key to the repository for MongoDB. Then we're going to go ahead and add that to the mirror list as well. And after the MongoDB has been added to the mirror list, we're going to go ahead and do a new app get update to refresh all of our sources. This will allow the Ubuntu installation to recognize that MongoDB is now available for install. Now once that's been updated, we can go ahead and install the MongoDB. After it's been installed, we're going to go ahead and reload the daemon so it knows that it's there. And then we're going to go ahead and enable it through the system control service so that it will start upon boot. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and actually turn that service on right now. So we can start using that. All right, we're going to go ahead and run a, a PS to see that the service is running. Here you can see that that is running, so we're good to go. And then we're going to start on our Elastic installation. Now in Elasticsearch, we're using version 6. And we're going to use the OSS version of that for the licensing issues. So here we're going to go ahead and add that new key to our repository. And as well, we're going to go ahead and add the new sources list for Elasticsearch. Now that that's been added, we're going to go ahead and run our install for Elasticsearch OSS. So go ahead and download and install that. And once it's installed, we do have to configure a couple files first. So the first file is in uh, Etsy Elasticsearch, and it's elasticsearch.yaml, which we'll go ahead and edit here. And inside of here, we need to modify two main parameters. The first one here is going to be the cluster name. And we're going to go ahead and change that to Greylog. And then we're going to go to the bottom of the file and add action.auto underscore create underscore index colon false to this. And once that, we're going to save this file. We're going to do the same thing as reloading the daemon so it knows that it's there. Enabling Elasticsearch. And then as well as starting up Elasticsearch for the first time. All right, 
seconds. We're going to do a process grep here just to see if Elasticsearch is running. Here you can see that it is running. I also want to do a net stat to see if it's actually listening on port 9200. You'll see here, it does take a few seconds to start up, um, and then eventually it does start listening on that port. This is bound locally at first. Uh, just keep all that traffic locally. Uh, if you want to modify that, you can through the configuration file. Next, we're going to go ahead and install Graylog, the main component here. We're going to go ahead and add the repository as well. So we're going to download the latest Debian file with the repository information. And then we're going to go ahead and do a deep package installation of that. And then once it's installed, we're going to go ahead and update the sources again. So it knows that they're there. And then we're also going to do an installation of Graylog server. I've cut this sequence down just a little bit here for the time. But once that package is installed, we do need to modify the configuration file. So we're going to go into Etsy Graylog server server.conf. And edit that. Now there's a few sections in here we modify. The first one there is going to be uh, the process, the password secret. And you can see that right above there, there's a command called pwgen. We're going to hop to a shell here, run the pwgen command, and get us a hash value. This hash value helps keep the salt of the password. Let's type that there, go back, pw. I'm going to copy that value there. Hop back into my configuration file and paste that into that field. And then the next field down there is the root password SHA2. Now there's a command right above there, and there's also one in the help docs that say what to do. So let's go back out to that shell prompt that we have. Um, we'll go back to that shell and we'll run that command, which is really just giving us a prompt to enter a password. I'm gonna type as admin just for example purposes. We cut and paste that hash value, and then exit the shell here, come back into that configuration file, and add it in. So now upon first log on, it'll be admin slash admin for the password. The last thing I want to do here is modify our time zone. I am currently in Mountain Time, so I'm going to go ahead and make that for Denver. This does modify the web UI, so all the times will be represented in your local time zone based upon this setting. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and again, let's reload the daemon, get that so the system control actually knows that it's there. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that Graylog server service. So that way it starts up on initial boot up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start that process right away. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the server log file, which is in var log gray log server and server.log. Just kind of watch that. You'll see eventually it'll pop up to where it says the gray log server has started. And here I'm going to go ahead and highlight that where it says server's up and running. So once it's there, you know gray log is actually fully started and it's ready to be used. So I'm going to hop out of here and there's a few other configurations I want to do while I'm on the command line. The first one I want to do is set up our syslog on this box. I want the local logs of this box for a test to kind of come into the server so I can see that data inside the gray log inf interface. I'm going to go to the very bottom of this file and add in some information. Here we're with a star dot star, we're saying gather any log that the system generates and then want to push it to a host. I'm here, I want to go back and find the IP address of where I'm going to. Um, here you can see it's 192.168.211.165. I'm going to come back in here and edit that address, put it in my destination. So the at sign says the destination is. Put in the IP address of your host, and then I'm going to point it to port 1514. And the reason we put it on a higher port is so the process can be started underneath Graylog instead of under root. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and give it the format. So the rsyslog protocol 23 format is a pre-populated format, which Greylog can accept and pull out the relevant fields automatically. So there's no parsing needed on the backside. Now once that configuration file is modified, we're going to save it and then restart that daemon. So we're going to restart our syslog. And from that point forward, any new logs will be going to our local host on port 1514. The next question a lot of times, well, if I don't have 1514 or if I have a lot of devices already pointed on 514, how can I get around that? So what we're going to do is use IP tables and put it a forwarding in there, part of the pre-routing directive on IP tables. We're going to say NAT anything coming in on both TCP port 514, and we're going to redirect that to same TCP port 1514. So we're going to go ahead and create that rule, enter that one, and then hit up arrow and go ahead and change that to UDP instead of TCP. And enter that one in. And then we're going to go ahead and take that and run IP table save. So this will actually save that configuration file off. So I'm going to save that to FC IP tables .rules. And then you can quickly look at that just to kind of see the output of that, what it looks like. Here's a couple you know, pre-routing rules. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a file inside of Etsy network if preup.d and call IP tables. This is going to be a startup script. So as the system starts up, it's going to load those rules in. So upon a reboot, you're still going to have that same natting going on. So any device pointed to this on 514 will always go to 1514. And here we're going to run it underneath of a shell script. We're just going to run an IP tables restore with that file that we just created, the IP tables rules. And then give it a nice exit code of zero. And save that off. And the last thing to make this work is we need to modify the, per or the permissions on the file, make it an executable file. So we'll do a chmod plus x on that file. All right, so now that file's up and working. Upon the next reboot, it'll automatically load that in. So the next thing I want to do is quickly test to make sure the web interface is up. Here I'm going to run just a curl command against the, the port. Graylog by default runs on port 9000. So I'm going to curl the local address to the 9000. You'll see here we do get a response. Uh, it is, does say Graylog web interface up in that title section. Next thing I want to do is make sure it's listing on all ports. So I'm going to go ahead and do a net stat just to validate what ports this is listening on. I'm going to grep again for 9000 since that's its listening port. It does look like it's bound only locally. So because of this, nothing externally would be able to connect to this box. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the server.conf file again. And I'm going to change the bind to address where it's listening on. So in this case, I'll go find that HTTP bind address. I'm going to copy that line and modify it. And then change the 127.0.0.1 to the local address of the box. In my case, 192, 168, 211, 165. And once that's done, we have to restart the Greylog service. So do a system control restart Greylog server. Now I'm going to tail the Greylog server file just to make sure it's up and running. Here you can see the server is up and running, and now it's listening on the correct port. So we'll hop over to the web browser, launch it on that port 9000. Here we get the web console that has been set up. You can see at the top there in the tagline, it's Greylog web interface. So you know it's connecting and working. This initial part here does take a couple seconds to load. It's compiling all the Java applets in the back end for the first time use. And once you get logged in, you type in admin for the default username and then whatever password you put in. In my case, it was admin. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to the box here. And once I get in here, 
You'll notice that it kind of comes to the search window at first. And you're also going to notice that in the top black title bar, there is a red number one. So when I click on the search button here, you'll see that there's a, no logs in the system up front. And the reason that is, is because there's no inputs as we call them. The inputs themselves is what part of that red number one is. It's just telling us, the administrators, that there's nothing actually collecting logs currently. So if I click on that, you'll notice that that big red box says there's no inputs running. So let's go ahead and create one of those real quick. We're going to go to System Inputs. And you'll notice here that it's empty. So I'm going to create just a generic syslog one because we already configured the local host to output logs. So select syslog UDP. I'm going to go ahead and make it a global. You can lock it down per node if you'd have multiple nodes. The bind address, if you say 000, it will bind everywhere. Or you can give it the local IP address if you want. Go ahead and switch that to 1514. So that way, Graylog user can start this up. It doesn't have to be ran as root for security purposes. And then some other options down there too if you want to store those full messages. And I've got to add a title in here. So I'm going to just call it syslog UDP, something generic. You can name this however you like. Once that's saved, you'll see it's in the starting state. And after a few seconds, after it starts that listener up, it will run or change to a running state instead of starting. All right, there we go. Now it's in a running state. I'm going to go back over to that search window um, in a second, but I want to generate some logs first. So the first thing I want to do here is go ahead and exit out. I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo su just to generate a log message locally. That'll come up. I'll enter my password here just to get a full log on. Now all that should be captured by the auth daemon. And once that's gathered, it's sent over that 1514 UDP channel into the gray log instance. I come back here, click search, and now I have all those logs. Here you can see there's the full log message of where it's going and who did it. Thanks for watching this video and happy logging.